In the summer of 1995, a teenage prospect by the name of Shea Cotton was hyped up as the next Michael Jordan. As at the age of just 15 years old, Sports Illustrated would run a story telling the world Shea Cotton was the next NBA All-Star to watch out for. Sports Illustrated would describe Shea as not only a number one prospect, as not only a tireless worker, but also they claimed this 15 year old had a 42 inch vertical leap. And his peers speak of his high school days with the same type of awe. A legend for a long time, man. Someone we grew up looking up to and, and got a chance to play against. One of the greatest athletes. I've ever seen. But as we know, Shea Cotton is not a household name. In fact, he never played a single minute in the NBA. He did match up with Kobe Bryant, and in a shocking twist, it was Shea Cotton who got the better of Kobe. At that time, we played against each other, he couldn't do nothing with me. I would love to find that tape, but for some mysterious reason, they won't release it. In fact, it was said in high school, Shea Cotton held his own with NBA legends, that he dunked on future Hall of Famer and Defensive Player of the Year, Kevin Garnett, three times in a single game, and that his AAU team won 200 games over the course of two years. At 15, as he tore down rim after rim, Shea Cotton was so good and so well known that it was rumored he had signed a Nike contract. As in high school, he wore 37 different pairs of Nikes in a single season. Which has to raise the question, what happened to one of the greatest young talents basketball has ever seen? How did Shea Cotton go from outplaying Kobe Bryant when he was one year younger to never seeing a single minute on an NBA court. Well, what's up guys, Mike here, and I wanna say, this is not a hate video on Shea Cotton. Shea Cotton is one of the first true warning stories in high school basketball history. He was a legend at an early age who had a massive flame out. However, he has used his own personal struggle to help the younger generation of basketball not make the same mistakes that he once did. That shows the true character Shea Cotton has. With that said, what did cause the downfall of a player who was a proven high school prodigy. As after the 1995 season as a sophomore, Shea led powerhouse Matter Day to a 36-1 record, a state championship, and most impressively, individually, Shea was the only sophomore in the entire country to be named a Parade All-American. This was a time, remember, where the internet was not in play, let alone social media. Making the Parade All-American list was considered a tremendous honor, and if we look at the other names on this list, we find several NBA Hall of Famers and All-Stars such as Kobe Bryant, Paul Pierce, Vince Carter, and Kevin Garnett. Around this time, Shea and Kobe would face off in an individual matchup, and according to Shea, at the time, he got the best of Kobe. We started drawing back and forth the East-West thing. We really got after it when we played each other. In my head, I was like, he's the one that's standing in front of me right now. I wanted to really show him that he wasn't better. Physically, I think it was too much for him over, over time. I got the better hand of him, but on that day, I was better. Kobe, rest in peace, is not here to defend himself. And as we can see on the Parade All-American list after Shea's junior season, he was the only junior, along with Lamar Odom, to earn first-team honors. It was during this time that Shea was also invited to private UCLA basketball runs with current NBA Hall of Famers and All-Stars such as Magic Johnson and Grant Hill. I can remember one in the wing. I think Magic had the rock in the middle. He kicked it up to me. It was me and Grant Hill in the foot race. He tried to run by me and cut me off and swipe it low. I just wrapped it, went around his body and dunked that thing and kind of looked at him. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. He also really did have the drive to become truly great. This was a kid whose mom made him go to summer school because he got a C in math. A C was not good enough in their household. Shea was also a man who was pushed heavily by his older brother and father. When other players who knew Shea at the time were asked about his work ethic, such as Earl Watson, they did nothing but rave about Shea and say that he moved differently than everyone else and handled his game like a business. And it's hard to see how anything could derail this tremendous momentum until we enter the first of the three bad strikes of luck that Shea would encounter. First up in the bad luck department was Shea's shoulder injury. As during his junior season, Shea was only getting better. Again, he went from fourth team All-American as a sophomore to first team All-American if we look closer at those lists. And in a game against Lamar Odom, Shea had 35 points and seven dunks in the third quarter when, in a freak play, Shea would injure his shoulder and he would need surgery, forcing him to miss his entire season senior season. Shea wanted to be the best. He had players like Kobe on his mind, and he also had wanting to leave early for the draft on his mind. After he was injured for his senior season, that was no longer an option, but that was okay. He was still a five-star prospect. He now had a chip on his shoulder, 
and he was once the number one player in the entire country. He still had the same vertical leap, he still had the same God-given talents. One season shouldn't change everything, but then came strike two. After a bit of weirdness with Shea at first signing with Long Beach State to play with his brother, then requesting out of that commitment after his brother declared for the NBA, Shea ended up at UCLA, where he was supposed to join a loaded Bruins team that not only had a future NBA All-Star in Baron Davis, but also had four other future NBA players only only strike two was an unexpected, devastating blow from the NCAA. As in September, instead of joining UCLA, Shea was deemed ineligible by the NCAA and immediately, the national public thought he was just another kid who faked his way through the SAT and got caught. It would come out later after Shea and his family would sue the NCAA that Shea had a learning disability where he learned better through hearing as opposed to through reading. Shea needed larger texts and more time to take the SAT which was granted by the educational testing service at the time. He went and passed the test, but despite this, the NCAA chose to ignore the educational testing service, stated that they had their own standards, and banned him completely from college basketball. This cannot be understated. And who is to blame? Shea was one of the first faced with this truly horrible reality. Should he go pro despite the fact that he would surely go undrafted? In a world where, remember, there was no NBA. NBA G League. He'd have to go play overseas where that was not common either. The odds would have been incredibly stacked against him. So instead, he chose to appeal the decision and went as far as to go back to prep school in order to prove that he was really about education. When he attempted to play college basketball the next year, the NCAA denied him again. Eventually, Shea's family would sue and win, allowing him to play at Alabama, but at that point, he was 22 years old. What is known is that at that time, basketball was really a one-track system for American athletes. You went high school, college, NBA. That was it. Shea, coming out of his high school senior season, was thrown out of that system, and he no longer had the best coaches in the world working with him. By the time Shea was allowed to play at Alabama, he put up a respectable 15.5 points and 4.5 rebounds per game, but he really needed more coaching. His game was still very raw. But we also have to remember the paths that these two players took after their monumental meeting. Kobe went from high school, which Shea was rumored to want to do, and immediately joined the Los Angeles Lakers and Shaq and Phil Jackson, a team full of NBA Hall of Fame legends with incredible coaching. While Kobe was learning from the best, Shea was learning from the best he could find. The NBA did see this. They knew the potential was still there. It is here, though, where we end with strike three, the final curse of bad luck for Shea Cotton. As a talent like Shea Cotton can be revived with the right work ethic, with the right drive, with the right coaching. At 22, Shea had missed out on four years of solidly good coaching. A tremendous disadvantage, however, the Orlando Magic did take a chance on him, and Shea swears he would have made the roster if not for a real tragedy. As during practice for the 2000 Summer League, Conrad McRae tragically passed away from heart complications. The Magic called off their Summer League team, and with that, Shea's chance at a roster that season vanished as a life was lost in front of his eyes. Shea has said he has for ever felt the impact of being there on that day. And to make matters worse for his professional basketball career, the first iteration of the NBA's G League, the NBA DL, was formed for the 2002 season, which meant Shea was one year late to immediately grabbing a spot in the league as he was an undrafted free agent in 2001. Another year that could have made a difference, Shea was slotted to play in the original season of this league in 2002. However, he would pull his thigh muscle on the first day in practice and would never play. At this point, Shea's NBA dream was essentially over. However, he jumped around from league to league, never once again standing at the level he once did. At a level where NBA player after NBA player will tell you, he was LeBron James before LeBron James. He was better than Kobe and Garnett in that moment. And again, all of the respect in the world to Shea for using his journey to help others. He is, in my opinion, a very unfortunate victim of a then broken system. It's hard to imagine Shea wouldn't have had a much better career and education if you were allowed to just attend UCLA. Those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think down below. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. That way you never miss a video. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day. Cue that.
music. If you're still here while the music is queued, here are two videos I think you are definitely going to enjoy. I mean, personally, I think the one on the left might be more your style, but the one on the right looks pretty awesome too. Click one, let me know what you think. And again, have an awesome day.